Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse 25. And stand with me tonight. He said, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Then Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. You may be seated. You know, when you read about the disciples walking with the Lord and, and seeing Jesus, and they saw Him face to face. They saw Him after He was crucified and raised from the dead. They saw Him. But they see Him walking on the water. Now, I understand it's dark out there. If you've ever been out on the ship, I've been out on an old wooden German ship out in the middle of nowhere. And, and look around, you just don't see nothing. But to see someone walking on the water... The Bible says they were afraid. They acted out of fear. Jesus said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. How many know sometimes He has to let us know? It's me. Don't be afraid. It's me telling you to do that. Don't be afraid. I remember the Clarks when we worked with them. We were the youth pastors. They were uh, the children's Church uh, leaders, they had the, young, the little kids up there singing, the Holy Ghost will take the chicken out of you. I mean, no, we need to get the chicken out of us. Amen. Jesus told them, be of good cheer, it is I. Don't be afraid. I don't even know they were still afraid. Even Peter, having enough about it to get out of the boat. I mean, he wasn't the only one on the boat. He was the only one willing to get off the boat. I've heard a lot of preachers preach about, oh, he, he just lacked faith. But you know what? He had to have some. He got out of the boat. That's right. That's right. He began to see his situation after he was walking on the water. Like you and I. We, begin, we sometimes see what's going on around us after we step out in ministry. Mm -hmm. Amen. After we say... I'm called to preach. I'm going to preach. We get out there, and then it just, whoo. We're looking around going, whoo. Oh, God, help me. And he's saying to us the whole time, it's I. Don't be afraid. I called you. I didn't put you out there for you to fall. I didn't put you out there for the devil to shoot you down like you're in a big duck hunt somewhere. Don't be afraid. When we get into times of trouble, Jesus is our comfort. He told them, don't be afraid. He comforted them, right? He comforted the people on the ship. He comforted Peter when he was sinking. Just by reaching out and taking his hand. Don't you know that had to be like, whew. Just a, a moment of relief. Oh, I'm not going to drown. The Lord pulls him up out of the water. Now understand, Jesus is standing on top of the water. He's not standing on the ship somewhere. He's standing on the water. And he reaches down and lifts Peter up out of the water. And they go up into the ship. And the Bible says that when they got onto the ship, the wind ceased. Why? Because the Lord was there. And He has power over nature itself that He can save the winds, be still. And you can read over and over in the Bible where they do isn't it good to serve a God who He just told Moses stretch your rod out over the Red Sea. And when He did, it parted. And the ground that they walked across on was dry. Explain that. Tell some Scientologist to explain that. But He told them, be of good cheer, it's I. Matthew 9 and 22, Jesus comforts us. 
But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole that very hour. Understand, this was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. She had faith that if she could just get to where Jesus was and not touch him, but to touch the very bottom of his garment, the hem of his garment. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She had faith that if she could just touch him, she would be healed. And I'm sure you know this story. She pressed in and pressed in and pressed in until she touched the hem of his garment. And when she did, Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples were like, oh, come on now. Yeah. There's people all around you. They're bumping you right and left. He said, no, somebody touched me because the virtue went out of me. And there, there she was. And I'm sure that when Jesus looked at her, the Bible says in Matthew 9, 22, that when he looked around, he saw her. He said, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. He never laid his hand on her. He never spoke to her about healing. He said, your faith has made you whole. How many of you know if we're going to say we have faith, we need to exercise it. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. You can't say, I believe it, and you're never out proclaiming it. Well, it's time to wake up and say, I'm going to start doing what I'm talking about. And more than just say, I've got it. I'm going to put it in action. I'm going to exercise it. This woman was willing to fight the crowd. She was willing to bump people, knock them to the side, crawl on the ground, whatever she had to do, just so she could get to a place where this issue of blood, she knew if I could just touch him, I'll be made whole. How many of you know if we could just get to the point where we could touch Jesus, things in our life would change. Right. We get down and pray. Oh, God. And then we forget. Why don't we don't have nothing else to say? Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know we need to start praying and say, be specific in our prayers and say, God, this is what I need. This is what I want. Your word, his word says that he'll give us the desires of our heart. Amen. We need to start saying, I need these things and I know that you're going to take care of what I need, but I want these things. Get our eyes off the material and get our eyes on the spiritual. 